So if you've been wanting to get into leather craft and you're about to walk into a Tandy store for the first time ever, and you're thinking, what are the basic things I should buy to get me started? That's what we're gonna cover right now. All right, there are a couple disclaimers that have to go along with this video. Like number one, this is just a total preference thing. Every single leather craftsman will probably have different answers for these first 10 tools that you should buy. And two, it's going to make a huge difference depending on what kind of leather work you wanna get into. So this would be assuming that you wanna start getting into making products that are similar to what we make at Stock & Barrel, specifically like the small carry goods, like wallets and accessories like that. Oh, and one really quick little shameless plug. By the way, Tandy has never asked me to push the books specifically. The books are something that I've kind of come across recently and I really wish I would have looked into them when I had first gotten started because I think it would have sped up a big part of the process. Like this one, for example, leather craft tools, how to use them and how to sharpen them. Again, this is one by Al Stolman, but he goes over just about every single leather specific tool that's out there. So it might be helpful to go pick this up, do some reading and uh, really dive into it because there's so much to learn here. So let's get started. I did everything within my power to narrow it down to only 10. I was really tempted to keep extending it and going beyond the, the first 10 tools that I think you should have. Um, but I, I really wanted to keep it narrow, keep it simple so that you could walk into a Tandy and with almost no investment at all, just pick up some really basic things. Number one, this is a little interchangeable blade precision knife. These are really lightweight and they're perfect for anything less than I'd say about five ounces of leather. You can get really precise cuts with this, really small, really intricate. This is a really important one to start out with because you're probably going to be working on smaller projects. Of course, if you're working with 15 ounce uh, skirting leather, you're not gonna be able to use this to cut anything. So again, this is for the small, intricate, lighter weight leather projects and uh, it's a must. All right, here's number two. This is what's considered a round knife or a head knife, depending on the shape of the blade. In that book, Al Stolman referred to this as a symbol of the leather craft trade. It's definitely one of those things, as soon as you see it, you recognize it as part of the leather craft world. It's kind of a general purpose, widely used knife. You can use it to trim leather, cut out your basic shapes before you get intricate. You can rock the blade back and use that small point for tight, precise cuts. And then as you start getting into longer, straighter cuts, you can rock it forward and use the big wide section of the blade. Number three is a cutting board. This is the exact same stuff they use in those big heavyweight hydraulic clicker presses. Uh, it's called a hydroma cutting mat and it can actually be really difficult to find. So thank goodness Tandy sells it now. Uh, it is a little bit more expensive than um, like the black poundo boards, which is a little bit softer, but this will last a whole lot longer. And you know for sure that your tools aren't gonna make it all the way through and hit the stone. The reason I had to put a cutting board in the list is because the rest of your tools are basically useless if you don't have something like this. You always wanna make sure that your tools are going through the leather and hitting something underneath that doesn't damage the blades. All right, the next one is this super handy little scratch awl. It may seem like an overly simple and arbitrary tool, but it's actually something that I consistently have with me all throughout the day. It has a lot of different uses. You can use it to lightly mark the top grain of your leather as you're tracing out your patterns. I also use this when I'm hand stitching because I'm able to push through the holes and open them up a little bit before I push my needle through. It just makes the whole process a lot smoother and a lot easier. And this specific awl is so small and compact that it just fits right into my palm and I'm able to still hold the needle with my fingers while the awl sits in my palm and opens up those holes. I actually use it for picking leather out of my dyes and all kinds of stuff. And since this one's so affordable, there's no reason why this shouldn't be one of your first tools you pick up. Number five on the list is an edge guide. These actually come in all shapes and sizes. You can use things like wing dividers and compasses for the same kind of thing. But this specific one has always worked beautifully for me. And the way that you use this tool is by running it down the edge of your leather and letting that little tiny blade cut a groove into the leather. And that actually has two purposes. One, it gives you a nice guide to know right where your stitch line is gonna be. Also, by cutting a groove into the leather, it actually allows that stitch to sit down inside and sit flush with the leather. All right, the next one is a maul or a mallet. I use this poly maul from Tandy. There are a couple of things to consider when it comes to mauls and mallets. Depending on what you're gonna be using them for, you may need something completely different. If you plan on using your mallet for mostly 
just stamping and tooling and you're just doing lots of light taps and you're holding your arm up for long periods of time, then you're probably just gonna want one of those lighter weight 11 to 14 ounce rawhide or wood mallets. The reason you might want a heavier weight mauler mallet is if you're actually punching through the leather with a chisel or some of those things that need a lot of pressure and weight to get through the leather. So depending on the work you're doing, it might actually be worth getting two. Get a really lightweight one that won't wear your arm out as you're tapping. Then you might want a heavier weight maul, like two to four pounds to really bash through the heavier weight stuff like skirting. Like if you're doing a lot of belts and strap work or Western tack, you're gonna want a heavy duty maul. One thing to note for sure is never use a steel hammer on your steel tools because you'll just obliterate them. That's why most of the leatherworking mauls and mallets have a poly or rawhide head. All right, the next one goes by a few different names. You can call them chisel punches or pricking irons. They're designed to make the hand stitching process look a whole lot better and a lot easier. I'm actually including two of them, but consider it as one tool. And they're not just round hole punches. They're actually little diamond chisels that give a much more professional look in your work than if you were to just punch a round hole. You want one that has at least six or eight prongs on it so that the straight stitches appear a lot straighter and uh, you'll actually get through a long stitch much faster. But you might need a little two pronger here as well because there's no way you can get around tight corners if you've got these long ones. The best way to use these is by using some kind of contact adhesive to assemble your leather parts together first and then putting the chisel on top of the leather and make sure that it's being held completely straight up and down without any angles. And then using your poly head or rawhide mallet or maul to punch it through. All right, this next one. I don't know if you wanna consider it a tool or not, but it is absolutely crucial if you're gonna walk into a Tandy for the first time wanting to make something out of leather, you're probably gonna need this. And that is a couple of harness needles and some thread. In order to do a saddle stitch, you're gonna need two needles. And if you're working with really thick leather, you might break some. So it's worth buying a pack of them. The thread that I like to use is this 92 weight, 100% polyester thread from Tandy. It's the same weight of thread that I happen to use on my Juki industrial sewing machine. So I like it to look very consistent and, and cohesive. I'm not planning on doing a saddle stitch tutorial for this video. I am gonna be doing one in the near future. So when that's done, I'll link it in the iCard above. All right, now we're getting into the edges. The next tool I would have to suggest is an edge beveler. The purpose of this tool is to round off the corners of your edges so that as you're burnishing your edges, they don't mushroom to the outside. These come in all different sizes. This one specifically is a zero, so it cuts a really small bevel. If you're careful, you can actually use these down to about one and a half to two ounces of leather. But these are especially useful on the heavier weight leather like belts and tack. All right, and the last one. This is another edge tool, and it's another one of those that seem probably overly simple, but I promise you this is one of the most useful things I've had in my workbench for years and years. And it's just a simple wood slicker. And it's been carved with these different sized channels depending on what leather you're working with. As long as you're working with vegetable tan leather, you should always be able to wet that edge down with a little bit of water or saddle soap or gum trag and slick those edges down with this tool and the friction will cause those edges to just glass up beautifully and will seal it up and keep it looking good for years and years. This is one of the things I love about Leathercraft. By investing in only about $150 worth of tools, you can take on a lifelong hobby or even grow in a business. With only these tools, you can produce a beautiful, refined piece of leather work and you can do it over and over again. Don't overcomplicate this stuff. You'll have plenty of time to realize that a different tool or an expensive machine will make your life easier as you go, but you don't need to start out with that. See what you can produce with even just the most basic tools. As always, I'm gonna have all of these tools listed in the description down below with an affiliate link there. Thank you guys so much for watching. It looks like I'm gonna go do some snow shoveling for a bit. It dumped on us, but it is beautiful outside. All right, I love you guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. You made a snowman? Yeah. We're gonna keep making it, I think. What are you gonna put for his eyes? Buttons. This is what we woke up to today. Yeah. No, we're not over. <laughs> <laughs> Snow all over. Are you closing? <laughs> <laughs> my butt's frozen. I sat down in my just my legs, so my butt's frozen.